In this video, I'll demonstrate the full sequence of Tibetan hormonal gymnastics. I talk about its origin, as well as the rules and contraindications. And I finish with my own feel-good morning stretches. I've been doing Tibetan hormonal gymnastics for more than seven years now. That's dedication for you, right here. I first heard about it from my mom when she'd been practicing it for quite some time already. Where do you go, mom? Where do Tibetan hormone gymnastics originate anyway? It first became known from the newspaper Komsomolskaya Pravda more than 30 years ago. According to the official legend, Soviet specialists built a power plant in the mountains of Tibet. And there they discovered a small monastery. At the request of the monks, the engineers installed a power line that reached the monastery. In gratitude, since they didn't have any money, the monks offered to teach the secrets of preserving health and prolonging life. One of the professionals started practicing Tibetan hormonal gymnastics and according to him, it led to maintaining good health. Moreover, his grey hair returned to its original colour and even at the age of 80, he didn't use glasses. This is what he told to the correspondents. After reading about his story, the Russian folk healer Olga Orlova decided to try it on herself. She was able to improve her health, establish hormonal balance and get rid of several chronic diseases. Therefore, she decided to make this technique available to a wider audience. From that moment on, this system was called Tibetan Hormonal Gymnastics of Olga Orlova. Now, a certain rules of things that you need to remember before and while practicing Tibetan Hormonal Gymnastics. Tibetan Hormonal Gymnastics is ideally performed after awakening between 6 and 8 a.m. This is when our body responds best to energy manipulation. You cannot expect instant results because the aggravation of your health occurred gradually as well. You should start noticing changing after a couple of months or even years. However, smaller improvements may manifest themselves much faster. Sometimes, after a certain time, various chronic ailments become aggravated. This indicates that the body has begun the process of self-healing. Therefore, it is not recommended to stop the practice. Do the exercises on a hard surface, for example on the floor or on the carpet. However, you could also stay in bed. And last but not least, Tibetan hormonal gymnastics require regularity. Even if you are engaged for many years but have taken a break of only a few days, the results can quickly disappear. Therefore, don't take longer than two day breaks. Next, there are some contraindications as well. Smoking, as well as the use of drugs and alcoholic beverages. Cardiovascular issues. Parkinson's disease. Presence of a stomach ulcer or acute inflammation of the intestine. Risk of infringement of hernia. Post-operative condition. Hypertensive crisis. Acute form of arthritis. Pathology of the spine. In the case of acute and chronic diseases, before starting the gymnastics, consult your physician. If you want to learn even more about Tibetan hormonal gymnastics and its benefits, go to the blog post. I don't practice the gymnastics right after awakening. Instead, I go to the toilet and brush my teeth first. You can't really do a stomach massage when your bladder is full. So let's start the sequence. Exercise 1. Rubbing the hands. Lying on your back on a hard surface, put your palms together in front of your chest, pointing the ends of your fingers to your chin. Rub your palms against each other for 6 to 10 times, speeding up the energy flows until they become hot. If after rubbing the palms remain dry and heated, your biofield is normal. If the palms do not warm up and become humid, it can mean that something is wrong with your body. Some sources even say that it may indicate cardiovascular disorders. 
In any case, continue with the exercises. Exercise 2. Arming the eyes. This exercise is for the improvement of vision. Lay your hot palms onto your eyes and start pressing at the following rate. One second per one movement. Then, lay the palms on the eyes and keep them covered for at least another 30 seconds. If you have poor eyesight or other eye issues, it is better to leave the palms rest for about two minutes. During this time, you are nurturing your eyes as well as all the receptors around them with energy. It is believed that gradually your vision will improve and your natural hair color will be restored. Exercise 3. Pumping the ears. This exercise is believed to address ear diseases. With the fingers on the back of your head, Press onto your ears with your palms. Do 30 pumps in the rate of one movement per second. The force of pressing should be comfortable and selected individually. After some time, inflammatory symptoms may occur, especially if they are related to the ears. Don't stop the exercise, simply press lighter if there is any pain. After a while, the chronic inflammation in the ear should pass and the hearing should improve. Some sources claim that all chronic inflammations should pass in six months time. These actions are said to improve the energy in the ear canal and lead to the elimination of inflammatory diseases of the middle ear and improving hearing. Exercise 4. Massaging the forehead. This exercise is for cleaning of maxillary sinuses, the sinuses next to your nose, and elimination of wrinkles on your forehead. Place your right palm on the forehead and the left on top of it. Start rubbing from side to side, from temple to temple, at a speed of 30 movements in 30 seconds. You don't necessarily need to touch the forehead, leaving a few centimeters airspace. But if you want to smooth out the wrinkles, you must rub against the skin. This exercise revitalizes all the sinuses and stimulates the pituitary gland. Exercise 5. Facelift. Put your thumbs behind the ear lobes and clench your hands into fists. Now, with your knuckles, start rubbing against your jawline from chin to ears. Again, 30 times, one movement per second. Press harder when you move from chin to ears and a bit lighter when coming backwards. Back and forth counts as one movement. After this exercise, you may feel a rush of blood to the face and a little sweat. Firming facial oval and improving lymphatic flow. Exercise 6. Massaging the crown. This exercise is for the improvement of cerebral circulation and normalization of blood pressure also for improving the condition of the joints and muscles of the arms. If you want, you can support your neck with a pillow. Then, put your left palm onto the right and, leaving a few centimeters of airspace between your crown and the hands, start moving from your forehead to the floor or the neck and back. 30 quick movements, one per second. Back and forth counts as one movement. Then, do the same movement from ear to ear. Again, 30 movements in 30 seconds. This exercise is believed to be good for those who have a high or low blood pressure. It can also improve mobility of the shoulder joints. Furthermore, if you have any pain in your shoulders, it can pass. Or, if you previously could not raise your hands up, then after a while you should be able to do so easily. Exercise 7. Massaging the thyroid gland. It's for normalizing the thyroid gland. Place the right hand on the thyroid and put your left hand on top. Now, start moving your left hand from the thyroid to your navel, leaving a few centimeters between your hand and the body. 30 movements back and forth. At the end, place your left hand on the right and hold it there for a few seconds. Exercise 8. Massaging the abdomen. This exercise will improve 
gastrointestinal function. Slowly move your hands, keeping the left one on the right, onto your stomach. Start massaging from the right side, making slow clockwise circular movements applying a slight pressure. This movement is believed to restore normal bowel activity and pass chronic constipation. The penultimate exercise improves blood circulation in the arms and feet, even in the small capillaries. If you were on your bed so far, I'd suggest moving onto the floor because this exercise is best done on a hard surface. Lying on your back, lift your arms and legs. Then rotate the hands at the wrist and the feet at the ankle joints, first clockwise, then counterclockwise, and finally back and forth. Do this for 30 seconds or longer. I usually count 12 to 14 rotations in each direction. Finish with shaking your limbs as if you try to shake them dry. Exercise 10. Rubbing the feet and legs. We finish off with rubbing our feet. It is known that on the feet there are active points associated with all organs. Their stimulation leads to normalization of the work of the whole organism. Sitting on the floor, begin to massage the feet. First one foot and then the other. If the feet are dry, lubricate them with some oil, for example olive oil. In case you detect pain, massage those points for longer. Pay special attention to the center of the feet. It will take about 30 seconds. After that, rub your legs with both palms from the bottom up in straight movements. I do five times each leg. And finally, with your hands in fists, Massage your thighs on both sides from knees to hips in circular movements. This will take 30 seconds or a bit longer. It's better to do it on bare thighs and I usually do, but chose to put some clothes on for the video. I personally like to end the sequence with some extra stretches. I start with folding both legs, one at a time against my chest, and take a few deep breaths. Then I do so with both legs simultaneously and, in turns, stretch my thigh muscles by bending my knees against the floor. After that, there's this classical yoga pose stretching the glutes. Again, a few deep breaths on each side. Then I stretch my back, taking five deep breaths, tightening my abdominal muscles with each exhale. In and out. In and out. Next, I stretch myself into a downward facing dog, stopping here for a few breaths. A final stretch for those hamstrings and calves. Relaxing the shoulders and finishing off with head neck rotations to one side and to the other about 10 times. Some mornings it really hurts. Had you heard about Tibetan hormonal gymnastics before? And most importantly, will you give it a go? Or, if you've tried it already, I'd love to read, learn about your experience.